expecting deplorables from Disruptor Hack the signal tonight. Perhaps you could leave your personal beliefs at home and try not to let them ruin the broadcast. Even if you don't care for the government, I assume you understand you have a vested interest in us staying on the air. Stay out of the orange. Can of condensed milk, a cow's tongue, and some rhubarb. Not one to so, miss. So, Julia's At team have PM, asked me to ask you to, to keep it light. Well, what does that mean? You mean to do that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans? Which looks at the Just astonishing don't get drawn into talking about the war. As we begin what is only been they do know this is the news, don't they? At 8 you don't hear this from me. It's over to Patrick Bannon. Oh. For all the day's sports board highlights, including all the tables of action, apparently there's a crew at Team HQ right now. Board, the just give me a speech or something tonight. I'll get on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Followed at by our unsettling Sometimes you sound just like him, you know. Which tells the cautionary tale How are of one you? brave young lady's battles to survive the cruel administrations of our neighbours. It at is eleven twenty-five. It it's in sizes. It and tonight, Doctor Adrian Atkinson Blimey I'm will be getting his teeth that. into Fiona from Hamble Bamblebury, who is in ten fact seconds, everybody. Twist on the humble biscuit, Rumble and that takes us after the weather and public information. Going in five, to our close down. four, but first three. Tonight, it's time to join Megan and the team for the National Nightly News. Good evening. News. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Sadly, however, more casualties were reported today, and as the weeks and months of this war make ever more demands on our armed services, those numbers will, tragically, only continue to rise. Don't starve. Advance's food programme moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time, and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. However, with the reported rise in mental and physical health issues since the imposition of the blockade, critics have questioned whether those smaller communities which are only now starting to receive help could have been better and quicker served. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centres has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organisations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centres have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Mankipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally tonight. Our mutual friend. Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pension Ridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. Since being taken into custody 10 weeks ago in this very studio, little has been heard from our former colleague. Despite how things ended, we wish him the best, and we'll be sure to bring you all the details of that court case every night. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week, and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lancashire. That's coming up on tonight's National Nightly News.
overexcited to announce. I'll be interviewing the one and only Lil C. And later, we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more. But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's speaking to us from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Prime Minister. Have we caught you exercising? Oh, have we started? Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. Uh, just a few yes, minor right. adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. I haven't joined the gym or anything. As my old man used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car. Language, park. Prime Minister. Language, Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? What? What's wrong? Oh, shit. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep. That's the so one. And can you tell us what brought about this new you? Tell us what brought about this new you. C and I were watching, you know, the night the blockade began. When Jeremy Donaldson. When Jeremy Donaldson. Well, you know. And it was a blistering heart, as I'm sure you all remember. And I, I were a bit wheezy from all the cigars and all that. And Mr. C turns to me after, you know, after the signal dropped away. And she was in floods of tears. And she says, please do She said, I could go on without you. She said. So I made a decision. And since that day, I have stopped smoking cigars. Except for Christmas. Weddings. State dinners. I swear I said, I can't as useless Rudy Black was done. God, anyway. Uh, apparently, I'm going on a walking holiday this Christmas, and that should finish me off for bloody good. Did you make the decision to holiday within the country this winter because of the blockade, Prime Minister? Well, Mrs. C has never liked travelling at the best of times. <laughs> uh, these are certainly not the best of times. On that, we can all agree. And uh, there's a lot of red tape involved in leaving the territories at the moment, as I'm sure you're all aware. Oh, there's a bastard now. All in it together. All in it together. Oh, yeah. Also, oh, yeah. Also, it doesn't seem very advanced seem to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet, Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know about this, Gail? Did you know about this, Gail? You should know that. Why don't you know? Well, leaving that for a moment, it says on this card that a body like yours must take some planning to achieve. What's your morning routine? Well, I have a frigid morning routine. Rigid? It's rigid for fuck's sake! Oh, yeah. A, a, a rigid... And demanding plan that my doctor and personal trainer. <laughs> Who's your personal trainer? Ah, oh, some prick or clerk. Is that on your car? I thought you might wonder. Prime oh, Minister, speaking of planning, with the blockade in its 20th week and the people of this country reeling from its effects, what plans do you have to get us out of this mess? What plans do you have to get us out of this mess? Well, that's a very blunt question, Mr. Surely Wolf. one for which you, the democratically elected Prime Minister, must have an answer. Don't you get smart with me, Pat. I was a fucking national treasure before you were a twinkle in the milkman's scrotum. You want to talk about plans? Let me tell you about plans. That's all we do. Fucking plans and revised plans and then meetings to discuss okay. the implementation of plans and plans and yet more planning for fucking plans and yet more fucking plans. Well, right, that's good. That's good to know, Plan. You know, I used to really like you, but you were a breath of fresh air. But I've been watching you, and you know what? You get more like him every day. You get more like him every day. I will take that as a compliment. Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Salisbury, is going to give a national address from team headquarters. Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Um, yes. Um, well, uh, I imagine that there sorry, will be sorry, you the usual. Uh, sorry, sorry, you no, what, what I mean, what do, I mean is you do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? You know I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, but Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As my old man used to say, if you wanted to get a job done quick, don't get bogged down in the pubes. What else have you got? Sorry. 
I need cards. What else? A little piece of my life. Do you want to rustle through? Get out. Refill my last. Get out. Refill my last. Ah, come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. What music do you listen to when you work out? What music do you listen to when you work out? Well, Gail tells me that I work out to the little C, but I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. And do you think the C stands for? It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, actually, that, that does make more sense, actually. Uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard, but we get by. You just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs. C. A many a fine single malt. I want for nothing. I want for nothing. Except for a decent night's sleep, of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, it's time for the Culture Spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. I genuinely can't wait to hear that. We'll be back after this. We'll be back after this. One minute back, everybody. And that is what happens when you wander from the... I don't think he knew about her statement. I don't think anyone's supposed to know. When you mentioned it, Bozeman's face turned a colour that I think you call embolism. Am I in trouble? Bozeman? Nah, you're like the torture you never had. I suppose the higher-ups might fire him, though. Who's Lil C? Oh, there's only justice, me. Who's Lil C? Are you winding me up? What? I'm civilised. I read books. I've never heard of her before. Oh, she's big, really big. Really? Is she any good? No, nah, of course not. She talks shit. My kids go mad for her, absolutely mad. Now, give me 10 seconds. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids. Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. What? Five, four, three. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughters Children's Night before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C! Say you look incredible. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh, what's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. Oh, bless you. I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. I mean, what was that like for you? bonkers just yeah. so weird i was in all the papers and the magazines overnight i went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show wow that must have been bizarre not really it was just like any other morning you know get up at five go on a four mile run have three meetings on my cabbage bath but then only then was my dad actually talking to me oh of course i mean the famed country singer billy bob jean short i didn't know you'd been estranged there's nothing that strange about it megan OK, yes, yeah, so he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. But there really isn't anything uh -huh. to prove that he's wrong. So, uh, this newfound explosion so, to your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as my manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? So, what's the album about? So, I thought it was about, like, how pretty and great I am. But actually, it's about monetizing youth, I think. Or about, like, promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah. He says, insecurity is an opportunity. Oh. Do you think he'd be happy? with you telling us all this. Telling you all what? 
really, it really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance soon and then this part will all be forgotten about. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yeah, it's from my album, Put It In My A Together and it's out tomorrow. Together and it's out So soon, after the last one. Oh, yeah, I've actually released two albums since lunchtime and a clothing line during this interview. <laughs> <laughs> All these projects, they're keeping you very busy, aren't they? It must be tough. Yeah, it can get tough and I hate it sometimes and I hate myself. I just want to, like, cry into a bath of root veg. But then I think thousands of girls would do anything to be me, so I must be quite lucky. Well, you, you know you don't have to do this, though, don't you? Yeah, I do think that sometimes. Most nights between, like, my fourth vodka and the eighth time a stranger slaps me around the arse. I think things could have been different, you know, like, better. I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come, when I press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you? So, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? <laughs> yeah, which can be tough. And sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Cragler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So, it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. All right then, well, you can go and get ready for that. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so, here is Megan. first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Force's favourite, the Queen of Team, here to break in your blockades, Lil C. See 
some action So come and break my sanctions Well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, well, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil Sipo. Well, for doing that. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new se segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. Can I just say, thank you so much for letting me do this. It really means a lot to me, you know, yeah. to be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. Uh, well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours, won't you? Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain perspective. You know what it's like. Oh. Oh, right. Um, and Michael? What was... Michael? What about... Billy Bob Jean short is seen. Oh, my dad! He's such a sweetheart. We both had the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a G&T before my meeting with the Louvre guys. <laughs> if they say for your pleasure, I'm going to start needing it. I hate to tell you this, but you're going to need all four sound effects buttons for this next section. Try and pick the most appropriate sound so effect for the actor's lines. Yen, they can't hear your choices, so they'll be assuming you're helping things along and not making them look ridiculous. I do, after the last section, can't help us all. Try and do better. No, not anymore. I'm better than that now. I'll tell you what, just keep adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely, right away. 10 seconds. And the cruise now mainly takes place around Subhapne. Five, four, <clears throat> three. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've got the algebra. I go by Jeff DePoon now. <laughs> How would you like that? Oh, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's shit. No. Oh. And how does Angela feel about all this? And how does Who? Angela feel about all this? Your, uh, your wife. Your, uh, your wife? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with no, Norm now. We were married I'm last month. Norm, <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. Norm de Plume. <laughs> yeah. And um, why did you and, write um, this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a protein sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. And I heard my father's voice. Jeff. It said, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You, make hay you ring shines. every penny you can get out of this. Every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, so got out my typewriter and started clacking. Wow. Utter <laughs> shite. And without further ado, <laughs> let's give it up for the notice board. <laughs> Miss Craven. Morning. Oh, Miss Craven. morning, Ray. Everything morning, all right, Ray. Mrs. Craven? Everything you right. look as worried as the vicar in closing time. 
Oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They vandalized my shop again. No! Yes! <laughs> They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn youths. I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> See? <laughs> Works like a charm. <laughs> what a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look at all the letters in my collection today. Oh, I think that one's addressed to me. <laughs> what? This, this one? Oh, so you're right. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. She says she got an A on her maths exam because one of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, was our Brenda. What's up, losers? What's up, losers? Oh, no! It's Brad! He's the coolest guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. Oh, clear off, Brad. We don't want any of your ilk around here. What? Radoons? No, ruffians. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? To uterine? That's right. To uterine? Maths is very That's important. Right. Would you mind, Ray? Would you mind, Ray? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you, a young person, have been spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me down! You, you know what? We misjudged you based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. <laughs> no joy! wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful yes, surprise. I now respect surprise. you as a man. Put her there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck. Give us a hug. to interrupt the first 
groundbreaking episode of the notice board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be um, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four major foreign cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into. Initial estimates put the death toll into. Uh, they put them into millions. I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages as a result, so apologies, apologies for the interruption. And apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centres and will not hesitate to detonate them if our conditions are not met in full and without delay. The people of our territory will no longer tolerate your illegal and genocidal blockade. You are to remove it immediately. We will accept nothing less than your unconditional surrender. Your territories will be taken under our control. We will install replacement governments to ensure that your citizens become part of the new future. Your borders are now our borders. Your people are our people. They will finally be fed and clothed and educated and healed. But for your privileged few, the moment that they feared is now upon them. Allow me to be crystal clear. If you fire a single shot at our territory or harm a single one of our citizens, we will not hesitate to detonate further devices. You will not find them. Though no doubt you are already searching for them. Our technology is decades ahead of yours. We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't really talk about my personal life in my job. It's not relevant or important. Um, or important. So many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. His name is David. And right now I. And right now I. I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently travelling the continent for work. He's currently travelling the continent for work. And I don't. I don't know where he is right now. I don't know where he is right now. And I should imagine that there are many of you sitting and at I home tonight digesting this, this news and this you also have loved ones on the continent. You also have loved in Urkistan or Harvia or in San Palmarino or, or, or Konislava, which is where David was Konislava, when I last spoke to him three days ago. So when I tell you I know <laughs> how you are feeling so tonight, you, believe, I me, I do. feeling tonight. believe me, I do. But I also know that there's... There's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet. We can't know that yet. But together we will find out. And I will be here every night feeling what you are feeling. And with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolf. My name's Megan. Let's make tomorrow better. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. We've got people ringing around, but the telephone networks are overloaded. Okay. We'll find him. Do we know exactly exactly which cities were hit? Or Megan. Megan. We will find him. Your country has left people struggling to So where on earth are you supposed to go for the other essentials?